Hello, this is Jill Slinker, the director of the Department of Student Programs. We are going to do our webinar for the Math Bowl in two parts today. The first part is going to contain just the format. And then the second part, Denise Buckingham will go over the content of the Math Bowl contest for this year. So let me give you just a basic description of the Math Bowl competition. The competition is made up of four rounds of questions and each round has three different team members competing in it. Each round is gonna consist of eight multiple choice questions and the competition will be based on the National Council of Teacher of Mathematics publication, Curriculum and Evaluation Standards for School Mathematics. So this will include 13 curriculum standards. Now the teams themselves, Ideally, your teams are composed of 12 members. Eight other people may be used as alternates. There's no limit of how many students may come from any one grade level. Um, a student may only participate in one of the three rounds of competition. Now, at the end of the fourth question in that round, one or two members of the squad may substitute for students who are at the table. So you have three students at the table. They are asked four questions. Then they're given an opportunity to sub in two, up to two members of the squad, um, and then for the final four questions. And then you have um, those, those rounds, okay? You have four of those rounds. Eligibility for the, for the team, all full-time students in grades four and five, and six where it is appropriate if, if six graders are in that building, they're eligible to compete. Um, within these constraints, schools may select their teams in any manner and any additional criteria that they choose to do so. The competition, again, is four rounds. Each round has eight questions, multiple choice. Um, those questions will be read to the students and projected on the screen simultaneously. And after consulting with the other team members at the table, the team captain will answer each, que each question by circling the chosen response on the answer sheet. At the conclusion of the allotted time, either 30, 45, or 60 seconds, depending upon the question, the proctor will grade each response before the next question is read. Now here's a basic timeline of when things are going on. Um, the time for the math competition, the time of year actually for the math competition has changed um, due largely to a lot of the weather issues that we've been having in the last couple of years with the competition. We wanted to try to move it to a time of year where it would be easier for um, our teams to actually make it to the competition and not have to postpone and cancel and all of that because of snow. So you'll notice the new timeline here. Um, the host assignments, the team roster form is going to be posted in February. The host assignments in March. Invitational weeks will occur during March. The team roster is due March 15th. Invitational questions will be posted on the 30th, and then the actual contest is on April 14th this year. So 2019-2020 membership participation form is available online, um, and it will include information to help you determine what your correct class is. Each school will want to read the instructions carefully when completing the form. There's a quick look. Blue class teams include sixth graders for large schools, that's 187 eligible students and up. Green class includes sixth graders, 186 and, and fewer. Orange class does not include sixth graders, 163 eligible students and up. Red class do not include sixth graders, 162 eligible students or fewer. And then the yellow class are teams that only have fourth graders on them, doesn't matter what size the school is. So as of this year, we have over 525 te or 520 teams, sorry, um, that have registered for Math Bowl for this year. We have a confirmation list posted on the Math Bowl website um, for coaches to check for the correct class registrations for their teams. Please do check that and make sure that it is what is appropriate for your team. If it is incorrect. Um, you need to call or email and let us know and we'll get it taken care of for you. Um, the Math Bowl host assignments, those will not be listed until March 
we need to know who and um, what are available and get them all matched up before we can post those. The invitationals, um, we will keep a list of those on the Math Bowl page. They're not required, but they can be attended as a means of practice for your team. Uh, we have the National Council of Teachers of Math Position Statement on Calculator Use um, is linked to this PowerPoint. We will post this PowerPoint as a webinar, and we will also po post the PowerPoint um, itself, and you can collect those links if you need to. Coach's Handbook, um, the 2020 Coach's Handbook is posted on our webpage. It includes all the rules and all the instructions for your 2020 team and you can access that at any time. This is an example of the score sheet that your students will see. Um, notice it's for two different rounds. You have the first one, you know, eight questions, the second one, eight questions. You know, it's a pretty simple score sheet. Um, and that's basically what your students are going to see. This year, Along with all of our other competitions, we will be introducing electro an electronic scoring system. Um, it's We rolled it out to all the contests beginning with Spell Bowl in the fall. Um, we received great reviews of the process. Students are going to continue to answer on a paper score sheet, so that's not gonna change for them at all. But the proctor will then grade that score sheet and enter the student answer into the electronic scoring system. We will create a separate instructional um, video and set of written instructions for the proctors on how to do that. It is very simple. All they are going to do is enter correct or in, you know, a C for correct, an I for incorrect into the system, and then um, hit enter. That's all they need to do. Um, we'll then, as a result, be able to see our team's progress through the contest live. We'll be able to see if there are any problems. Um, if we need to fix anything, we can fix it on site here because we're using shared Google documents for this score system. And um, then as a result, we're gonna be able to post scores much quicker, much more efficiently the next day. Okay, you know, you always want to recruit for your team. Here's a poster that you can use if you wanna print out and use it to recruit for your team. There are multiple ways to do that. You can have call out meetings. You can ask for teacher recommendations. You can have them take a qualifying test. You can look at the honor roll invitations. You know, teacher, you, know, you can look at teacher meetings and teacher conv convocations and ask for recommendations there. Put up posters in the hall. Get your past contestants to talk up the contest. There are all sorts of ways that you can recruit a team. So the 2020 contest standards, the process standards with number sense and computation, those are used every year. The other standards rotate on a three-year cycle to provide a sharper focus each year. So the ones that we're gonna use in 2020 will be the process standards with number sense, computation, and data analysis and probability. So you can see the next rotation down here, 2021, will be algebraic thinking, and then 2022 will be back to geometry and measurement. So for this year, we're working on data analysis and probability. So let's talk a little bit more about the contest standards. All standards in grades K-4 are assumed to be mastered by the contestants in grades four to six, and thus those topics are fair game every year. Standards in grades five to six are the grade level minimums. The focus will apply here. Grade seven standards are gonna be brought in to challenge contestants and provide differentiation and scores at the top level for awarding of prizes. Now the focus here is further restricted and discussed in the coaches webinar um, in the next one that will be attached. Now contest questions are great for developing high expectations for all students and helping us improve instruction and learning. So the practice questions. The 2020 Math Bowl competition are, will be using the same standards that we used for the 2008, 2011, 14, and 17 competitions. So instead of writing new practice questions for 2020, we will make available the questions used for those past competitions. By studying these questions with their teams, coaches can get a good picture of what the 2020 questions will be like. 
Questions will be posted on the Math Bowl webpage. Each year we may focus on something special and that focus is in this presentation for 2020. So these questions are guidelines but may not contain all that's included this year and most likely we'll have things that are not going to be covered this year, just so that you know that. So for the something special, you need to pay attention to the webinar to come. Talk about calculators. Um, students can use almost any algebraic functioning calculator except handheld mini computers, cell phones or laptops, pocket organizers, calculators with typewriter style keypads, calculators with paper tape or printers, calculators that talk or make other noise, any device with that with internet access or calculators that require an external power source, such as an electrical outlet. So any calculator with a memory must have the memory cleared before the competition. Solar powered calculators with a battery backup are fine. Solar powder, powered calculators without battery backup, they may be used at the student's own risk since lighting you know, may be dim to allow better visibility of the screens. So students are expected to bring their own calculators. Fraction capable calculators are recommended. Unacceptable calculators will be held by an official until the end of the competition and then return to the teams. So know that some problems require computations that would take elementary students a long time. So they should know how to use their calculators to perform those particular types of computations quickly. Also know that there are many problems that you should be able to do faster without a calculator than you can with a calculator. So understand that. And a bit of advice from the um, question writer, avoid cheap calculators that don't use order of operations. The Math Bowl coaching videos. Um, Indiana State University has assembled two sets of videos designed to help Math Bowl coaches. The first series is geared toward giving tips about coaching the contest. And it stars the Math Bowl coach from Northwestern Elementary School. Jan Colazar. Jan does a great job of sharing her successful system of coaching. The second set of videos discusses ways to teach the concept of probability, and it may spark some ideas in both new and experienced coaches. Although the topic videos were created specifically for the 2011 competition, they fit this year's topics too. So the contest curriculum. Now the previous contest sample questions are the best guides to the curriculum. Be sure that all team members get to study all those questions and then work on the topics that they have trouble with. The questions come from the same question writers and the writers use past contests to structure the new contest. Some special topics will change, but those will be addressed in the coming webinar. Now, the rest of this webinar will be covered by our question writer and she is going to start with math curriculum. Thank you for listening. Good luck with this year's competition. As always, if you have any questions, be, feel free to ask us. The new um, IASP website with the Math Bowl page has lots of information posted on it and it's much more user-friendly than our um, web page from the past from the past years so you know feel free to explore that and make sure that you take advantage of all of the materials that we've posted there for you thank you